Hey you all and good morning. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the west. More specifically we are in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and today we're going to try to make a little bit of distance. We're going to be heading into Montana from here but before we left Idaho I definitely wanted to stop and say hello to the Paul Bunyan here because I will always stop for a Bunyan. Little burger shack here, Paul Bunyan's famous burgers. And uh, we have a towering Paul Bunyan. He's a little flat. It's not necessarily three dimensional, but a towering Paul Bunyan here. Looks like he's getting ready to munch on one of those Paul Bunyan burgers there. Looks like he's winking at us. There's another little Bunyan here on the door. Looks like he's taking a sweater with him in case it gets cold. And just right across the street from the Paul Bunyan, we have a very interesting piece of art here. Looks like a big bright splash of water. But then coming up from the water we have this heart, this human heart floating here. I don't know if it's kerplunking down into the water or if it's springing forth from the water. But what makes it even more interesting is you zoom in on the heart there and it has the uh, Bill of Rights Article 14 written on the heart. So I don't know, I don't know what this means. If we have any uh, anyone knowledgeable in art out there, please uh, let me know your interpretation of what is happening here. Over here at the North Idaho Inn, this is a pretty Interesting. See the chimney here on the side of the building is actually shaped like the state of Idaho. The Idaho shaped chimney there. Idaho has a very distinct shape as far as states go. And uh, we are currently in Coeur d'Alene, which is actually way, way up here in the panhandle. We're actually not too far from uh, Canada where we're at now, but we are headed. Uh, Headed eastward, so we shouldn't be uh, out of the state here before too long. I do like this little mascot here for Jimmy's restaurant. What is he? I think he is. I think he is a chef's hat. He's an anthropomorphic chef hat. I stopped off here at uh, Cadaldo Mission. This is uh, a. Uh, church and missionary area and uh, reason one of the reasons I did stop admittedly is I'd actually heard uh, of Cataldo Mission mentioned in a song as uh, one of my favorite artists Josh Ritter wrote a song called Wings where he mentions Cataldo Mission he's actually uh, actually from Idaho now apparently uh, this was founded in the uh, 1850s the Native Americans of this area wanted, uh, apparently they wanted to learn more about Christianity. And so they actually sent a group to uh, St. Louis and uh, actually requested missionaries to come in and build the mission to help uh, spread Christianity in the area. Now, uh, apparently we can go inside. Now this is the oldest standing building in uh, in Idaho, and uh, yeah, let's peek inside. Oh wow, this is this is something. Yeah, it smells like an old church in here, and. Uh, yeah, just look at this altar here. Oh, you can see where the candles would hang from the pans there. Oh, this is stunning. This is stunning.
It's a very teeny tiny little organ right there. And then look at that picture. Is that, uh, I think that is Jesus. I think he's holding the earth in one of his hands. Oh, over here. I think this is the confession, confession box or confessional, yeah. Where someone would sit here and talk to the priest. Okay, so I guess the priest would sit in there. They would open the confessional. So the priest, I guess the priest would be in the middle. There's two sides. Now I'm, I did not grow up Catholic, so I'm not a hundred percent familiar with this process. I'll have to ask Jen <laughs> when I get back, but, um, I don't know. The, the priest would sit in here, but there's two booths. So would he give two confessionals? Would there be two confessions at the same time or would they, uh, would they take turns? I guess that maybe the just make it quicker. One person confesses and they leave and then the other person's maybe already waiting over there. Here's the uh, little miniature mission for donations. Okay, there's literally one penny in there. You gotta, gotta show the mission a little more, a little more love than that. We'll peek into the uh, visitor center over here. Oh, look at this guy here. It's the, uh, what's his name is Scout. I guess this is the mascot for uh, Idaho State Parks. See another little mini mission there. And we can see the inside of the mission. You can see the Native American congregation there. Oh, and over here we have the miniest of the mini missions. Look at that tiny little mission right there. Stopped off here in Kellogg, Idaho, and uh, noticed up there on top of the Trail Motel, there's to be a Native American on horseback. And over here we have a great little piece of roadside architecture, the Miner's Hat Realty, which is of course <laughs> shaped like a miner's hat. It's got the uh, lamp there on front, and it uh, looks like it is an operating business. I guess uh, it is a real estate agency. If I was gonna buy, if I was gonna buy a piece of real estate here in Idaho, this is this would be my first stop. I want to buy, I want to buy land in a uh, in a giant miner's hat. Over here is also a a mural. Some of the local miners. Stopped off here in Wallace, Idaho. This is the Wallace, Idaho Welcome Center here. Over here at the Welcome Center, we have this replica mine. So we can head in here. Yeah, you can see the braces there, keeping the mine from collapsing. Yeah, a lot of uh, mining themed exhibits out here. Here is different, uh, bits be used to drill into stone. You can see this uh, spike here been, been driven into the rock here. And over here, these are, I guess, all hand tools used for mining. Man, I'm glad that's not my job. In here, it looks like there is a exhibit on explosives. So I guess uh, explosives will be placed into the rock. This button make the explosion. What? Oh, okay. There's the 
You can see there's the blast, the blast pattern there. Brightly colored exhibit here on uh, jackhammers. This crank here actually meant to be powered by a mule. You uh, hook a mule to that and they walk in a circle turning that crank. Now, this is an air locomotive. This would be used to transport miners in and out of the mine. And over here we have boxes of the different minerals that they mine for in Idaho. That is a Galena there. And here is a statue dedicated to miners and their family. You can see the miner there trying to do his job, trying to drill there while his family clings to him. You, you see even his, uh, even his little son there on his back appears to be banging on his helmet with a shovel. I bet he is saying, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to do all this mining? My family won't leave me alone. Traveled to downtown Wallace, Idaho, and check this out, this beautiful vintage hotel sign, the Stardust Motel. Look at here, sitting underneath the sign at the Stardust Hotel, we have a very colorful UFO. Because UFOs travel through the stars. This is Idaho there. Oh, I guess we can I guess we can crawl in and have a seat. Okay. Take a little break from the long lonesome road, just hanging out in this UFO. Yeah, there's seating all around so people could sit here and have a nice, relaxing conversation about mining and space aliens. It's a drive in restaurant here. It has this really cool bus out front, this vintage bus. Pretty amazing. Oh, it looks like this may be, I don't know if this bus itself is like a, is like a, maybe a little food truck. See the window right there? And on top of the building there, you got a little family of bicycles, a little teeny tiny bike there, all the way to the big two-seater. You got a lot of interesting vintage signs in this town. There's Albertini's. Looks like it has a big, uh, big gem there on the top. Now, I wanted to check this out while we were in town. The North Idaho Trading Company. I one time got a postcard from here. Yeah, in the window there, you can see an elk wearing a saddle. Man, wouldn't it be fun to ride around on an elk? And some other assorted heads here. Oh, and we are greeted here by a human skeleton in a box check that out oh and that that there that's a good price for a jackalope oh got a woolly booger sighted up there oh look at this little bigfoot exhibit you got the plaster cast different books different uh, weekly world news articles featuring uh, featuring bigfoot and if you see that little toy back there next to the jug i actually have that. I remember my dad had it as a child and then I uh, found it at an antique mall and I purchased one too. I have no idea where it actually came from and I never really thought that it was Bigfoot until now. Oh yeah they got some great oddities in here. See the little frog band there. 
it says that this skull here actually belongs to the Jersey Devil, which is pretty impressive. And uh, there you go, got a two-headed duck there. And then that is a meteor there in the other bell jar. Some uh, medical quackery in here. And another woolly booger. Well, that one's got hooves for ears and hooves for teeth. That's unique. I like that. And this is what was on the uh, postcard that I received from here. The mummified mermaid. Look at that. They got the Fiji style mermaid in here. And here amongst the firearms, you have a bear with a bazooka. A bear zooka, if you will. It's a collection of tiny things there. That is this teeny tiny chamber pot there. The smallest book in the world. And uh, the world's smallest functioning handgun. Which is more, I guess, like a finger gun. There's a little arcade back here. I don't know if I've ever played Magic Sword. Oh yeah, look at these very irregular antlers there. I don't even know what animal that goes to. Is it one of, is it one of these guys? Yeah, the store is kind of like a maze. But no matter where you go, there are uh, taxidermied heads. <laughs> uh, here's some uh, trophies for motorcycle riding. Oh, look at the, up there shark hanging there from the ceiling. It's got uh, dead eyes that are black like a doll's eyes. Some fancy dolls and fancy chairs. I think that's a water buffalo up there. I hear that they're selling heads and hats and hats hung on heads. And it looks like someone has loved this moose a little too much. Got some of the fur rubbed off his head. What are these things? Little bearded, blue bearded babies? Oh my gosh. Are these the, uh, are these the new cubies here? Love the the big hippo head there. That's amazing. <laughs> also, there's a um, a uh, fencing helmet turned into a lamb. Oh, look up there. There is like the fiberglass half face of a muffler man. Wonder which wonder which muffler man that came from. Over here, there's a Hulk Hogan and Macho Man wrestling buddies. Remember back in the day, those were the those were the coolest thing to have. I never actually owned one, but uh, I envied those who did. There's a little tiki man there. And I like this as a, a bank. It says First Idaho National Bank. And it's like a potato that you put your money in. And look at this hanging from the ceiling. A whale of a thing. A thing of a whale. Hmm. Wonder what part of the whale that is. There's the famous uh, bat boy from uh, Weekly World News, and look at that little Bat Boy bobblehead, I love that. And as we leave the North Idaho Trading Company, I spot a sign that says museum. You know what that means. We're invoking the EM rule. Okay, so it looks like we're headed into the Wallace District Mining Museum. So this is the entrance to the mining museum here. Behind this. Oh, there we go. It's all motion activated. The lights come on. You can see the miner there. And uh, some of the mining tools. Yeah, it's dark back in here. Oh, there we go. This is the last complete steam operated diamond drill known to exist. So a piece of mining history there. Deeper into the mine here. Some of the mining helmets and lanterns. The 
gonna call this the Widowmaker there. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be the one in charge of operating the Widowmaker. There's a little cartoon of a guy using the Widowmaker. You know, that's a tip. If you work at a job, if they call something the Widowmaker, say, hey, can I work, can I work with something else maybe? Different types of drills. This is a jack leg drill. Okay, yeah, we saw this is where they put the explosives in the holes to blow down a wall. Well, here's the explosive devices themselves there. It's kind of an interesting experience, like how it lights up as you go. Because it saves on power. It's kind of a cool effect, kind of like you're walking through an old mine. The saws. Oh, I guess this is like a like a medical stretcher in case you get injured in the mine. Oh, I thought for a second the lights weren't gonna flick on there. There we go, all the precious minerals dug out of the ground here in Idaho. A lot of galena, it looks like. Now this is pretty amazing here. You see, in, uh, in its coffin there is the last stoplight on Interstate 90. It's uh, Interstate 90 from uh, Boston, Massachusetts to Seattle, Washington. So a cross-country interstate and um, Apparently, when this was taken down in 1991, it allowed you to drive from Boston to Seattle without ever having to stop for a stoplight. This was the last one. If you drove all the way in 1990, if you drove from Boston, Massachusetts to Seattle on, uh, on Interstate 90, you would have to stop once for a stoplight. Well, not necessarily. If it was green, you could just keep going. But uh, it says they completed a viaduct that allowed the passing over of Wallace. And uh, this completed a uninterrupted interstate from, uh, from Boston to Seattle, which is pretty, pretty uh, insane. You see, they actually had a commemorative lowering of the stoplight. They um, had almost had like a funeral for the stoplight. So yeah, you can see it. So they have it lying here in its casket with the uh, red, yellow, and green spots on it. And uh, a reef made of trash, it looks like. Maybe some mementos left. There's uh, crushed beer cans, packs of cigarettes, and a, uh, a fox's face. So yeah, this is a, a very historical, historical point on the long lonesome road here, laid to rest. Here is the uh, major mineral products mined in Idaho. We have lead, of course. I guess lead is lead. Uh, is lead is galena is lead made from galena or is galena made from lead? I don't. I'm not. I'm not a geologist. I'm sorry. It shows what these are uh, turned into. Looks like the galena goes into making cables. Phosphate goes into everything from fertilizer to toothpaste. See some other things down there. Soft drinks, matches. So, yeah, phosphates in everything. Then the silver goes into making uh, film to take photos, which probably not that much gets used for that these days. So, mirrors and silverware. And then finally, zinc. You see, zinc goes into paint and um, suntan lotion. Man, I hate suntan lotion. So this is a good example on why I have the EM rule. You know, no matter how small a museum is, no matter what the subject matter, I feel there's always at least one thing in there that is profoundly interesting. And in this case, the last stoplight laying in its casket. I think that worth, worth the price of admission alone and proof that you know you gotta stop at all these little museums because they all got little treasures hiding inside. And here in Wallace, Idaho, this point right here, that manhole cover was 
by decree of the mayor, declared the center of the universe. You see the official sign there? There's a sign on each corner pointing to the intersection saying that this here is the center of the universe. See if we can uh, safely uh, go take a peek at uh, the center without getting hit by a car. All right, I think the coast is mostly clear here. You can go and see the center of the universe. Yep, you can see right there on the manhole cover, it says the center of the universe, Wallace, Idaho. And the reason that Wallace, Idaho considers itself to be the center of the universe is because of the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, they declared that there was probable uh, pollution in Wallace. They declared it a, a, a site for, for cleanup because of the probable pollution. Because of all the mines, I'm assuming the, the you know, mining for galena or lead, um, you know, possibly poses a risk to the environment. So the EPA declared it a probable pollution site, even though they could not prove it. I guess there wasn't any metrics they could use to show that there actually, this pollution actually existed. So the mayor, who apparently was a little cranky, a little snarky, said that if they were declaring this a pollution site, then he was declaring the town the center of the universe because, as he put it, neither claim could be proven or disproven. Over here, we have the gift shop at the center of the universe. You can see there, welcome to the center of the universe, Wallace, Idaho. And there's an alien. So let's check out the gift shop at the center of the universe. A lot of gems and pretty rocks for sale in here. But in the back, we have the galaxy room. It says, go on in. What's, what's, in, the what's in the galaxy? Oh, look at this. Of, uh, oh, who's standing over there? Oh my gosh. That freaked me out. Who is that? Who, who are you? Is, okay, that's, is that Elvis? Is that Elvis? Am I mistaken? I think that's Elvis. I think that's Elvis. I guess these are black light reactive uh, rocks and minerals. Look at my uh, black light reactive Crocs and socks there. Some different little toys and trinkets here that react to the black light here in the galaxy room. Oh, there's Marilyn back here. And, uh, yeah, look at that. And they sell rare matchbooks here. And look at that, the world's longest matchbook. Seems almost inconveniently long. But look at what we have here. 2024 is the year of the pressed penny here on the Carpetbagger channel. And we got some pressed pennies here. One that declares Wallace, Idaho, the uh, center of the universe. Definitely got to get a center of the universe penny. Okay, and we got the uh, Coeur d'Alene Mining District and the uh, center of the universe penny. Over here at the Wallace Brewing Company, if you look up to the second floor, you can see a polar bear looking down menacingly at Wallace. And there is the viaduct that closed I-90 two stoplights. And we have crossed the state line into Hagen, Montana and stopped off here at the 50,000 silver dollar bar. It is said that there is $50,000 worth of silver dollars affixed to the walls of this bar. And here we go. You see up on the wall there, each one of those 
is a silver dollar. And here in the bar area, you can see just behind the bar, all these silver dollars. You can see panels hanging from the ceiling covered in silver dollars. Yeah, over here you can see a dollar sign made with silver dollars. Get a closer look at these silver dollars. And I guess over the years, the US has produced different types of silver dollars. So you see some different designs here with the uh, Liberty Bell, the Eagle there, and uh, Dwight Eisenhower. And yeah, the actual bar itself has uh, silver dollars embedded. Looks like these are like La Lady Liberty silver dollars there. And if you're traveling that long, lonesome road and you want to grab a drink here, but you want to feel a little less lonesome, you can sit at this table here. It has a couple of uh, cowboys that will keep you company. You see back behind the bar, they have the current total of silver dollars there. There is uh, $85,495 worth of silver dollars on the wall, even though it's called the $50,000 uh, silver dollar bar. Um, I guess they don't want to keep changing the name, but uh, yeah, I guess if you wanted to be completely accurate, it would be the $85,495 bar. And they actually sell some antique silver dollars here. They go for about $100 a piece, meaning, man, I mean, I don't know the different ones, how they're worth different values, but I just saw tons of these in there, and each one's worth 100 bucks. That's, uh, that's pretty crazy. So yeah, if there are 80... 4,000 silver dollars hanging on the wall, and each one is worth a hundred dollars, which I don't know if each one is, but just let's say for each one was a uh, was a hundred dollars, then that would be yeah, that would be a lot of money. Oh my goodness, look at here in this pond, see someone's uh. Someone's bathing down there. Look at that. Big old moose down there. Having a little swim. Look at that, he just went all the way under. Just dunked his head. <laughs> yeah, he dunks his head all the way under. And then merge. Oh, look at that. Shaking that water off. Oh, he emerges. Emerges from the pond. Shakes himself off and goes trotting back into the forest. Now, after a long drive through big sky country we have landed at our destination for the evening here in great falls montana we are going to be staying here at the o'hare inn home of the sip and dip lounge just look at this here this was uh opened in 1962 and it looks like design wise they have not changed a whole lot. You can see the mermaid there on the sign for the Sip and Dip Lounge and that is because they are known for having mermaids swimming in their bar. It's just mermaids out here in Montana. Let's go check in. Okay, so we have been checked in. You're here in the lobby. 
they have a restaurant in there called Clark and Lewis's. And then up these stairs, we have the Sip and Dip Lounge. And here we are, the Sip and Dip Lounge. I've been so excited since I heard there was a mermaid bar in Montana. Let's check this out. And look at this, behind the bar here, they have mermaids. <laughs> yeah, pretty small little tiki bar in here, but absolutely astounding to be able to see mermaids swimming in Montana. Oh, see the, oh bone a kiss. You're swimming there. That's a little girl talking to the mermaid. <laughs> There's a little wind up turtle there. Oh, she kissed the turtle. Oh, now she's got a little fish. blocks go and then using bubbles to raise the blocks up. Oh, thank you. What's the last name on your tab, honey? Andrews. My, my drink has arrived. So I ordered the sip and dip fish bowl there. It's got a lot of different types of rum to my understanding. I know. Oh, very good. The pineapple in there. Way better. She'll come to you. So we got a little umbrella there. She said way better. She might pull you a kiss, Cherry. too. Oh, okay. Oh, there's an orange. That's so crazy. These ones aren't either. We're just taking the picture. So if you want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's very different than the mermaid we saw at the uh, North Idaho Trading Company. Much less terrifying. All right, having a drink here at the Sip and Dip next to the mermaid window. It is a wonderful night in Montana. I think we're allowed to step behind the bar here in order to say hello to the mermaid. Oh, look at that. Doing her, doing her backflip there. Maybe she'll, maybe she'll come up and say hi. Hello! Hey there. I don't know if she can hear me. Oh, so, so nice to meet you. Aww. Oh yeah, here's her bubble trick. She drops little cubes. Blows the bubbles. Oh, that one got away. Oh, there she goes. Nice work. Yay. Now the restaurant downstairs does serve food up here in the Sip and Dip Lounge. So I ordered some dinner here. Started off with a little salad. Never had salad in a tiki bar before. And I have officially become a member of the Clean Fishbowl Club here at the uh, Sip and Dip Lounge. Oh, look at that. He's got a shark. A shark there. <laughs> oh. Okay, my food has arrived. Got the steak and shrimp here. And then uh, green beans and mashed potatoes. Oh, it looks like she's got a troll down. Oh, rock on. Okay, so let's dig in here. A skewer of shrimp. Fits with the aquatic theme of the bar. Stay here. Mm. That is excellent. Excellent steak, excellent shrimp, excellent drinks, excellent mermaid show. Place is excellent. 
So the food, the drink, all excellent here. Absolutely a member of the Clean Plate Club. She's got lionfish. That's invasive. Oh. oh, she ate it. Oh, this is delicious. For you. All right, let's go find our room. Let's do the room reveal. And here we are. Nice little room here. Got the uh, horses, the wagon train there, and the painting over the bed. Yeah, nice little place to spend the evening. So when you're doing a trip through Idaho and Montana, you wouldn't necessarily expect the theme of the day to be mermaids, but here we are. We saw the uh, mummified mermaid at the North Idaho Trading Company, and we saw a non-mummified mermaid here at the Sip and Dip Lounge. Um, yeah, it's been a, been, a, been a fun day driving across, you know, these vast expanses of empty space here in uh, in Montana it really is a huge state. It's just a lot of wide open spaces. I guess that's they call it the they call it the big sky country. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow we are going to be leaving Montana. Now, on this trip, I was planning on seeing the California State Fair, the Montana State Fair, and the North Dakota State Fair. But for uh, for reasons of scheduling and timing, I'm going to need to drive to North Dakota tomorrow, visit their state fair, and then drive back into Montana for the Montana State Fair. No one said this was going to be easy. So uh, some, some long driving days ahead of me, but really happy to uh, make it out to some of these, uh, these state fairs. I had a great day today. Um, traveling. This is part of the country I'm not that familiar with, so it's always good to see new things that I've never seen before in this country. Um, America, I'll tell you what, it's just there's so much to see, so many different environments, so many different cultures to enjoy as you travel this country. It's 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 amazing. So love, always love going to some place that I've never been before. But uh, I want to thank you guys for coming along with me on this grand state fair road trip. Um, especially thanks to those of you who watch every day. I've been uploading every day on this trip, and it means a lot to me that people are uh, are tuning in every day. Uh, if you do like these videos, please consider subscribing. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun, random stuff. If uh, you would like to help the channel in other ways, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more gets you a postcard once a month from me to you. I've uh, got some new merch coming very soon in the Etsy shop. It's arrived. I just need to uh, find a way to uh, to get it from Jen. She's opened it up. We've got it. It's in our. It's in my home. We just need to 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 get it get it up in the shop. So uh, also cameo. Personalized messages, send to your friends, family, or just to yourself. All the information for that is in the description. And of course, all those things help keep this train on the track. This boat in the water and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.